Hello guys. This week we're going to be discussing what it's like to be based in Tbilisi, Georgia as a remote worker and a nomadic photographer. Let's do this. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know who I am, uh, my name is James Kerwin. I'm actually an architecture and interior photographer. I love, specialise really in hidden and abandoned places, relics and ruins around the world. I also love shooting ghost towns, uh, hidden and off the beaten path places. But I also shoot stock video and photography as well. Uh, my website is in the link in the description below, so feel free to check me out. Uh, but enough about me. Um, why do I want to talk about Georgia? Well, I actually became a nomadic photographer in January of 2019. Um, and that meant that I left my home in the UK, placed it all into storage with my girlfriend Jade, and off we departed to see the world. <sighs> Great decision, right? 2020 has been a bit of a disaster. And we were in Southeast Asia at the time, actually. Um, we'd been in Georgia all of last summer for our workshops. I, I ha held photography tours and workshops here in Georgia uh, in my first year. And we actually based ourselves here for basically five months. So I got to know the city really well. And I came here in 2018 on two occasions to recce those tours as well. Um, so I knew it very well. I had some contacts here, and that was very important. Um, but what I then did is we went off to have our holidays in Southeast Asia, and when the pandemic hit, our stuff in Lebanon got cancelled, another country I was due to head to, and I ran back here with Jade. So basically it was Jade's decision, let's get back to Tbilisi. We got here actually with two days to spare before the borders closed on us, and our visa lasts until March the 14th, 2021. So yeah, so I thought it'd be great to pull together a video of pros and cons as for being a really a remote worker uh, in Georgia. If you do like this content, then please consider subscribing uh, and obviously hit the notification bell. I do upload content on a Thursday and a Sunday. If you wanna see more of these videos, then of course do that. Okay, the pros then. So the first one is to do with the pandemic and the year we're in. I'm gonna get the negatives out of the way first, but the pandemic, um, I knew that Georgia were gonna handle it really well on the basis um, that it was the winter here. Tourism here in the summer, uh, tends to be you know, way more people come here in the summer months and I knew that obviously the pandemic the timing it hit in sort of like the global scale I knew that the uh, results would be that here would be less a hit um, so when we were on our plane on the way back from Kuala Lumpur to Istanbul and we said let's go to Tbilisi we knew that it wouldn't be so badly affected what we were a bit worried about uh, was we didn't know how the government would react obviously in terms of like you know putting you know procedures in place and stuff like this. The other positive though is also the long uh, visa. Um, so with that comes a 12 month visa for Brits and um, we're both Brits so it made it easy in terms of like a 12 month working visa here in Georgia. So of course there were two pros straight off the bat. The next one is to do with locations and the places to visit around the country. Now the locations are stunning. Uh, especially if you've got a car, uh, but even if you haven't and you're just going around the city of Tbilisi or Batumi, some of the stuff to see is truly fantastic uh, for where you are. Um, locations such as mountains, seascapes, there's also you know architecture that's stunning in both cities, all cities really, including Katesi as well. Um, and everywhere you go, it's unique and, and interesting. Um, and I would say if you put the time in, you're going to get great results with those locations. There's some stunning stuff to see, some of the best hiking spots, some of the best lakes, and also some beautiful remote locations that even locals have only discovered in recent years in terms of waterfalls and, and things like this as well. And yeah, that leads me on to the next one, really, which is there's so much to see. It's such a small country, you wouldn't think that there's that much to see, but there's actually bloody loads, <laughs> to be honest. Um, for such a small country, it's really diverse. Mountains, there's even a semi-desert just down here towards Azerbaijan. And if you have a car, I'd recommend perhaps a 4x4. There's so much to see. Get out of the cities and go and explore. Uh, Tusheti, Shguli, uh, Mustaya. Uh, there's also Shkal Tobol for me, architecture, photography. Batumi and uh, Ajara regions are beautiful for, for interiors and architecture, but there's also stuff to do with the wine region in the east, and there's monasteries and beautiful places like Vardzia in the south as well towards uh, Turkey. Stuff 
all over the country. So vast, lots of stuff to see. I don't think you can see it all in a couple of weeks. You certainly can't. That leads me nicely on to autumn colours. Now, some of the autumn colours here are beautiful. Some of the best I've ever seen. I'm not from the US, and I know that you guys get some stunning colours, but here they are really, really nice. Obviously, you've got the mountains, and you've got the lakes, and that's one aspect to it. But then you've got the, you know, blending in with the architecture in the cities, and it kind of starts up the mountains and works its way down. So the the, the, the sort of period, and because it's a small country, the period of the autumn months tends to last quite long. In fact, probably soon we're going to go to Tosheti, and the autumn there starts around about the end of September, early October, and then you basically, as you work your way back towards the cities, you sort of follow autumn as you come down. Uh, honestly, it's truly beautiful. The next positive leads me on to the weather. Um, it's, yeah, during the summer, if you're going to have days off here as a remote worker, it's really, really nice. Um, you know, it's really hot most days, probably too much in some instances. Get yourself some air con, make sure your apartment's got air con. And um, you can really, if you go out into the mountains and get away from the cities, uh, you know, in the summer months, you can have some amazing days off. So another highlight, and of course, lots of pubs with courtyards all around Tbilisi and Batumi as well, so another positive. So the next point is cost of living. It's incredibly cheap here, um, especially to see out 2020 and a pandemic. It's a great choice. Um, rent, etc. bills. Um, our rent is 250 US dollars a month. I, I knew the flat and I knew the landlady, so I negotiated a deal for a whole year to see this um, global situation out. And I thought it'd be great to kind of um, negotiate a longer term. It would help her out and also help us out at the same instance. But even when it's a normal year, last year, I think we paid 330 US dollars, so it's not that much more really. Um, and it meant that kind of your accommodation usually comes with aircon, all your utensils, your furniture, like the one behind me here. I think this one goes for 400 a month. It's a, I've borrowed it off a friend for, for these videos. But effectively, you can see what you get for your money. All bills, internet, Wi-Fi, all working really, really good. I highly recommend that as well. Use services like Airbnb, and if you're coming for a long term, maybe speak to the owner and, and negotiate yourself a little deal. And that leads me on to produce and food and other household bills. Obviously, household bills, if you're going to rent privately, uh, tend to be really cheap. You can actually pay them with the little machines on the corners around the cities, uh, especially the bigger cities. Um, you put your card in, your debit card, and you can pay all your bills. And if you're doing it that way, things are even cheaper. But for a remote worker, you probably want to go the Airbnb route. But the good news is, is produce and food Beer and wine is incredibly cheap. If you shop local, I mean, you, you literally can't get it any cheaper, I don't think, in the world. Um, you can pick up a loaf of bread, bread rolls for a little as seven pence, UK pence. Um, 10, you know, 10 cents in euros. So cheap. Um, the produce is quality as well, like onions, but uh, things like tomatoes. Things that grow here are amazing quality, and if not, they import them from Turkey, and you tend to have really high quality. If you go around the markets of Tbilisi, you'll find some amazing produce. Uh, the meat as well, the meat is amazing. Some of the, uh, the beef, the pork is ginormous. You know, so some of this stuff, the value that you're getting for it, a chicken breast, you can probably get a pack of chicken breasts, five of them in there, and it probably costs in the region of three pounds, so about three euros 50 currently, um, which is really, great value for five chicken breasts. You know, you can get a lot of meals out of that. When it comes to mobile phones and connectivity like 4G and internet, MAGT has an amazing deal on here in 2020. Um, you can actually top up uh, unlimited data for your phone for five lari, which is about one pound 50, you know, a, a week, which is incredible. So for a whole month, it'll cost you about, you know, six pounds to basically have a connectivity constantly on. Uh, and I'm not talking about poor quality. You can be 3,000 meters up the mountains and still have 4G. It's incredibly fast, better than probably some of the Wi-Fi around the cities. Um, the city's main ones, Tbilisi and Batumi, do have free Wi-Fi spots. And anywhere you go, you tend to pick up uh, amazing Wi-Fi anyway. The speeds are pretty decent. I wouldn't say they're stunning, but they're really up there. They're, it's quite new technology around Georgia. So yeah, I highly recommend uh, the internet and the 4G. Don't think you can't work here, because you certainly can. And that leads me on to the ability to conduct business. Of course, uh, for uh, literally for 2020, most of my work has been online. Uh, I've been running seminars, online talks through Zoom to camera clubs and doing personal talks as well um, to my own audience, um, selling them through my website. That's lent, meant a lot of online work and, and the 4G and, and obviously the internet has really helped me out.
For anyone interested, I have got links to my talks below. I've got one on Bannon architecture, one on editing interiors and architecture, and another one on video for photographers. So check those out in the links below if you're interested. The final point is hire car. There's hire car companies all around the country, Batumi, Katasi, and Tbilisi, um, and it tends to be no deposits on those car hires. Um, they're not always the cheapest, I'll get onto that um, in the negatives, but the, um, yeah, they're usually highly available and their prices are coming down because of the uh, global pandemic. So that wraps up the pros. I think there's more, and if I've missed anything, obviously please leave me a comment in the description below. But for now, let's go on to some of the cons of being here this year. The first one, of course, is missing family and friends. I've, I've missed a lot of my family and friends. And when you're stuck in a, a pandemic situation and you're all locked down in your separate countries, it'd be good to go and get a hug from time to time. I know, boo-hoo. But, you know, it'd be good to do so. Um, missed having a beer with some of my best buddies. And I think at the end of the day, it'd be good um, uh, to go and see them again once this is all over. So, yeah, missing family and friends is, of course, a negative. The other one as well is not really a, a negative as such, but you do need a car if you want to go and see some of those amazing locations that I have put up on the screen. Um, I, ha I was lucky that I kind of knew locals that could do the translating for me to go and purchase a car. And I was lucky I had some money that I could have access to, $3,000 it cost to get something that was road worthy. Um, Georgia is the dumping ground for some of the some countries like write-offs, so you've got to be very careful what you purchase. Uh, Germany, America, and uh, the UK, and also parts of Iran and places like this do dump some of their cars here, Azerbaijan as well. So be careful what you purchase if you're going to do this. Um, and obviously, I was lucky to have access, but it's a uh, Having a car, I think, is a definite pro, but just think about it and, and work it out before you do it. For instance, you've got to have a Georgian address to be able to do this. Um, if you haven't got one, maybe ask a friend. The next negative leads me on to the driving quality. It's another thing that's to do with driving. The quality is terrible in Georgia. Um, there's even been a case this year where 17 people died in a minibus accident falling off a mountain, and that's usually because of drunk locals or drunk locals not paying attention. Sometimes you'll see things like uh, kids sitting on mother's laps in the passenger seat, lots of people on their mobile phones while driving, speeding is an issue as well as drink driving, especially remotely. These are all things to consider greatly before driving here. I'm quite experienced at driving in these kind of environments and countries. I've driven in Lebanon, South Africa, Georgia, Armenia. I've even been in South, um, you know, in South East Asia driving as well, Taiwan, places like this. They're incredibly tough places to drive some of these places and Georgia is no different. It's not a negative as such, but think about it before you do it. And I've got some tips for you if you want to drive. Have a good night's sleep before you go and do your trip. Uh, make sure you drive in the daylight hours only um, and maybe share the driving if you can and use others in the car to kind of point out obstacles and things to be aware of. They're all my tips for driving in Georgia. So language is the next one. Um, I'm an Englishman, so it's quite easy for me to sort of knock English, you know, language on to one side uh, and do other stuff. A bit lazy, really. Um, but I do want to learn more Georgian. I think as well the language here is really tough to learn. 33 letters in the alphabet or syllables in the alphabet. Um, and it is an incredibly tough language to learn. In some of the bigger cities, they do speak English and Russian as well. So if you speak those languages, you're probably going to have an advantage. For me personally, of course, it's been tough in some situations, especially for photography, but I wouldn't say let it put you off. Uh, people will try their best to speak the language you speak. It's a friendly nation. Okay, another con is it's incredibly hot in the summer, and this really is applied to photography. If you love your heat, then it's not so much a negative. Uh, it does mean you need air con, um, but what I mean is it's bright and hard to shoot photography when between June and September, it's incredibly bright. Outside now, it's a really bright day, uh, it's not great for photography. So it's not so much a negative, but just something to bear in mind if you're a photographer looking to come and base yourself here. So the next negative for me personally has been so much online work in 2020. Um, I'm not really an online person. I like to be out and about in the field, meeting people, doing workshops, running tours. Uh, I'm gonna be doing them hopefully as soon as um, things increase and better themselves in 2021, 2022. Uh, hopefully we survive that far, that would be a positive. Um, but I love meeting people, so this year has been incredibly tough to do so much online work. And of course, as well, that means people don't necessarily always want to do the online courses people are offering. There's so many, so much competition now that getting an uptake on some courses or, or some things like that is quite difficult. So yeah, that's a negative for me. 
Um, another one that well, we're talking about locations as well here in Georgia. The flip side of that is some of the best locations here are caked in litter, and that is a it's a developing country, um, so it's to be expected. Obviously, they need training and educating, and that's not a bad thing. Um, Developing also means a lot of building work in some of the beautiful locations. We went to a place called Gomi Mountain fairly recently and it was caked in litter and also had a lot of building work all day and night. And if you go in there for peace and quiet, yeah, you're not getting that when someone's using a hammer next door to you. So yeah, another negative, unfortunately. The last point here uh, before we wrap this video up is I came to Georgia on a whim. It's not great for technology here. Uh, it's something to bear in mind. Uh, come with the gear that you need um, because certain gear is not available here. And although you can order it on things like USA to Georgia, Kiwi Post from the UK, uh, I think tech here is quite behind and quite expensive to replace. I've broken camera lenses here. Uh, I've not been able to access some lighting gear. And obviously coming here, uh, for a pandemic and being locked in the country meant that I had to make do with the gear I had, which hasn't always been the easiest scenario. For instance, now I'd like a soft box for these videos, but I've had to make do with window light and a small ring light that we purchased last year for some makeup videos that Jade was doing. Uh, to summarize what's good about Georgia really is um, the lifestyle, uh, it's cheap and easy to eat, um, you know, in terms of cost of living, it's relatively affordable. And uh, there's a new visa policy for as well for anyone interested, digital nomads out there. For about 2,000, I think you have to earn over 2,000 US dollars a month. And you can actually apply to come here even now the borders are closed, if you can get here, <laughs> if you can find a flight. Um, but that new visa policy allows six months access. Uh, you've got to guarantee you're going to be here six months, which I think is fair enough. And I would highly recommend it. Cafs, shops, the architecture is fascinating. There's lots of beautiful places to work and remotely. And we've seen some amazing accommodation online over the last uh, six months being here as well. Some of the, some of the accommodation on offer is stunning. You know, great value for money for what you're getting. So yeah, I highly recommend that. And of course, it's a beautiful country as well. I'd summarize and round this video up by saying if you're a remote worker, photographer, or someone who wants to come here and work uh, online, I'd say I highly recommend it. This is definitely a country that's worth checking out if you haven't done so already. Okay, I think that rounds everything up today. I've done a lot of talking today. Uh, lots of pros and cons about Georgia. Uh, if you've liked this content and you want to see more, I've got other stuff coming up just like this. I tend to post videos that sit down once a week and then location videos for photography once a week also. I upload videos on a Thursday and a Sunday. If you want to be notified when them videos are live, please make sure you hit the bell notification and of course subscribe at the same time to see more of my content. If you've got any questions about Georgia, you want to know more or there's anything I've missed, then please leave them in the comments section below. And of course, I'll come back to you straight away. I'll ensure to come back to you. For now, if you like this video, perhaps share it with a friend if you found it useful. Tickle the like button and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.